Alafia kings and queens, peace, peace, peace. It's your girl Tay, and I'm back with another Instacart slash Uber Eats video. So first things first, you guys, definitely make sure you smash that like button. It's always comment down below. Share, subscribe if you haven't already. Plus, push your post notification bell button, so that way anytime I upload a video, you'll be notified. Okay, so getting right into it. You guys have to excuse me if this video is a little long. And I'm only saying this because someone commented on how long my videos are. But I feel like if you don't agree with the length of the videos, you can just skip to get to the meat of the potatoes like everybody else does of the video if you need be. But, you know, again, I apologize if they're a little long, but I am going to be covering quite a bit today. So let me just get the Uber Eats earnings report out of the way first. So... Um, I did Uber Eats all last week. Today is Monday, you guys. Monday the 20, I think July 29th. So, um, it is about 7.40 in the morning. I'm taking my son to school. And it's probably going to be the only quiet moment I have. You guys, have also excuse the fact that I haven't put out a video. But the reason why is because, um, my daughter broke her clavicle bone last week. So, I've been kind of dealing with that, um getting her used to basically walking around with a brace on it ain't easy for a six-year-old who has a lot of energy now to have to reserve all of that energy and limit her movement um for the next eight weeks or so so that's what i've been dealing with you guys so don't think i forgot about my channel i have it but a broken clavicle bone just kind of <laughs> put a slight damper in my plans okay so anyways the earnings report for uber eats so i'm actually gonna put a, a, a screenshot on um on the screen for you guys so that you can see i'm going just off of the top of my head based off of the last thing i read last night um i made 391 dollars and i believe 86 cents that was for a total of i believe 61 trips again i'm going to put it on the screen so you can see exactly how many trips i did that was a total of I think 61 trips um, and 20 I believe 26 or 27 hours for the whole week which came out to about $14 an hour um, now I did also get some cash tips that I didn't include in that um, also from that money there was no boost there was no promotions there was no Quest, there was nothing like that. 360 something dollars of that was straight from the earnings. And uh, $28 was how much I got in customers' tips. So, as you can see, I didn't really get a whole bunch of tips this week. So, the majority of that came from um, Uber Eats. I did get some cash tips this week. I think I got a total of seven cash tips. So, that brought my total up to, um, what is that, 403? But, like I said, that amount averaged out to about $14 an hour when I calculated it so I'm pretty happy um, another thing is I took off Tuesday and Wednesday I think it was Tuesday no Wednesday Thursday I did not work up last week not Instacart or Uber Eats um, because of the situation with my daughter so I do believe that my earnings could have been much higher than that but because of the fact that I was dealing with what I was dealing with I needed myself um you know what i mean at least 48 hours to kind of adjust and get my daughter adjusted to what was going on as well so i did not work those two days so i think that that's pretty good considering the fact that i only worked five days and um made that amount of money so that's my uber eats earning reports uh the lowest day i believe i made 58 dollars i believe that was tuesday because on monday i made 67 and the highest which i'm actually happy about was yesterday Excuse me, I'm so tired. But the highest that I made was $101.29 in one day. That was in one day. And that was actually my first time making that amount of money in one day on any app. I've never made that amount of money before. So, Uber Eats in my area as of lately. I don't know. I feel like once you reach a certain tier or once you reach a certain amount of deliveries and you guys can chime in and let me know if you've experienced this yourself if you are a new uber east driver or if you are an ex experienced uber east driver do you remember it slowing down do you think it was because of the weather or uh do you remember it being an issue of um not an issue but having anything to do with for example um 
uh, maybe your status or anything like that. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because I notice now that the trips that they're giving me are a lot further out. And I kind of question why weren't they sending me further out in the beginning? You know, Uber Eats doesn't operate in terms of their zones and regions the same as the other apps from what I've seen. Um, Uber Eats, for example, I live in Orange County, but I work pretty much, it seems like everywhere. Um, last night, I ended up 20 miles away from my house. Whereas if I were working something like DoorDash, um, they would only send me within one city. Um, Uber East doesn't send you within one city. You can be in the city of Norwalk. And only those who are in California or anywhere near I am know what I'm talking about. So you can be in the city of Norwalk and end up all the way in Pasadena. I ended up all the way in San Gabriel Valley last night. You know what I'm saying? So I was just kind of wondering and questioning, you know, why is it that they hadn't sent me these this far out before? I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot of trips that are um, nine miles away, seven miles away. You know, I'm getting a lot of larger orders, whereas before, all of my orders were $3, $4, $3, $4, $3, $4. $4. I think the most I've gotten was like $7. But they were small orders. They would be a mile away from the restaurant, so I wasn't really making a lot. I had actually stopped doing six hours a day because I do, this is what I do just in case anyone wants to know how I do it. I do um, anywhere from 10.30 to 1.30, 2 o'clock or even 11 um, and then I'll do, um, go back out again from 5 to, uh, 5 to um, 9 or 10. As of lately, actually, I've been staying out past 10 o'clock because um, a lot of people, a lot of drivers are going home at that time. And since the kids are not in school, which I keep saying is I'm taking advantage, nobody has to get up early in the morning. So when everybody else is saying, okay, I'm done for the night, I try to stay out and get some more of those orders. So I'm averaging about 15 to 16 trips. And I'm only saying this again because I know this is the information that I'd be wanting some of the Uber Eats drivers to give me. So on average for me, I'm going to say, just to sum that part up and get to the next part, I'm going to say that for Uber Eats, I'm averaging right now between $350 and $400 a week. I'm definitely going to challenge myself this week. I know I said I was going to do it last week, but because of what happened, I didn't get a chance to. So I'm definitely going to challenge myself this week. I want to try to get closer to six, dollars $700 this week. I'm going to try to do seven days this week. Um, I'm going to do my same schedule. I either go out at between 10.30 to 11 to 1 32 o'clock and I go home from 2 o'clock to uh, 5 o'clock and then I go back out <sighs> between 5 and 5 30 to uh, now 9 10 o'clock actually 10 30 I usually get my last order at around 10 30 so um, I'm averaging anywhere when I looked at the hours I'm averaging anywhere from about four to six hours a day it's not always um, it could be less depending on how busy or slow it is you guys know on certain days it's slow like Monday Tuesday it tends to be a little bit slower um, at night but it's usually a little bit more busy at lunchtime because everybody is ordering from their jobs um, at lunchtime where I am so I'm averaging also um, between 10 and 16 or 18 trips a day um so yeah that's my uber eats thing i know that they've done some what do you call that some updates to their app as of lately um someone asked me how i felt about the the the, the updates to be quite honest i still feel like they need to be investing their money into their drivers or other aspects of the company that's going to make it more beneficial for everybody because even with all of the upgrades and new um, items or whatever that they're adding to the app it's still glitches there's still issues I've missed out myself personally on about four or five orders where I've clicked to accept and then it will say something went wrong um, and I don't know why and a lot of these apps do have glitches like that I don't know if that's a part of the algorithm and if it's something that it does to make sure that you don't go over a certain amount of money because they're trying to make sure that all drivers have an opportunity to make a certain amount of money today I don't know or if it's just simply the the app itself that's glitching but I know that the app is still pretty glitchy for me all of them but uber eats app is pretty glitchy so um you know it was frustrating to me because i messed up this is one little incident that happened this week with uber eats um with the new update so usually if you get a batch order from uber eats 
when you get to the restaurant, the batch, for those who don't know what a, or what a batch order is, is when you get two orders for the same exact place. So usually when you get to the restaurant and you scroll up, you'll see the two names. If you click on the three dots to the right of the screen, you can see what each customer ordered. You can click and see if you can click to put that it's not ready. The only thing with that is you have to accept both orders at the same time. So let's say you get there, because I know with me with batch orders, sometimes I'll receive one order and then while I'm there, another one will come in. So the one order that I already got may be ready. However, the second order obviously is not ready because it was just placed. So I have to sit there and wait for 10 minutes for that one to be ready. Um, with the new system, now you don't even see the other person's name. And I messed up because I didn't know I wasn't aware. So what ended up happening is I had a batched order. It didn't pop up. When I got to the restaurant and I scrolled up, I only saw one name. I don't even remember if it made a noise uh, to give me the ping for the second order. And I remember looking at the bottom of my screen and saying, seeing something like, walking distance to next order. Um, but I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know what that meant. So I don't know. I, I ended up hitting all these buttons and basically ignored uh, what was going on. But hold on, you guys. I'm here in my son's school, so I'll get back to you guys in a second. Okie dokie, y'all. So yeah, like I was saying, um, I was doing a batch order and it was saying walking distance to next order and I do remember another name popping up at the bottom of the screen and I clicked to uh, start delivery. I didn't realize that it was for a second order so that's the only issue that I've had so far. But what ended up happening with that one is I literally drove to drop off the first order and then the second name popped up and it was trying to navigate me to the second customer. So I had to um, thank God the address or I, I remembered the name of the restaurant and the restaurant was literally a half a mile away from where I was. So I had to navigate my way back to the damn restaurant just to pick up the food for the second order and then go <laughs> drop it off. So um, another cool feature that I've noticed with Uber Eats that they've started doing is if you guys notice, well, at least where I am, I don't have, it doesn't show red. Like it doesn't show where it's busy at or anything like that. What it does say at the bottom of the screen, sometimes it'll say you're in a busy area, expect trip soon. So now it says that, or it says you're in a slow area, expect long waits between trips. So um, even with that though, I've noticed that when that message pops up, the expect uh, uh, long waits between trips, I'll usually still get an order and it'll just send me nine miles away and they'll end up routing me to a place where it is busy at. So I don't know if that's happening for you guys, but definitely let me know what's going on in your area for Uber Eats. I don't have any um, more Quest promotion or anything like that. Like I said, my earnings were completely based off of me busting my behind. I'm kind of mad that I didn't work those two days, but expect another video this coming weekend um of another earnings report i'm gonna see if i can beat that i think i've done 400 two weeks in a row now so i definitely want to try to beat that and do five maybe six so we're gonna see what we can do so anyways now on to the instacart part so i had a question where they were asking me the difference between full service shopper and in-store shopper so i'm gonna try to make this quick um but this is my experience. I did get a chance to speak to a couple of in-store shoppers to get their feedback. So the information that I'm giving you is based off of what they told me because I've never been an in-store shopper. So this is not from my experience and also from what's in the Shopper Help app in the Instacart um, app which isn't really a whole lot of information. It just tells you how to switch roles. So anyways, uh, a full service shopper is just that. You are the person that will receive the order, you will go to the grocery store, you will shop the order, and then you will deliver the order. The in-store shopper does not deliver the order. However, they still have a second, st a second step to complete after they have shopped the order. So they still shop the order the same as we do. They still use their phone. They still have to scan the items. They still have to use their Instacart card to shop and pay for the order. However, when they're done, they have to go to a certain area where there's a machine, a specific printer, where they uh, print out labels that will label the bag, comes with a barcode that we in turn use when we go in to pick up delivery only orders. We scan those barcodes so that we can identify the order for the correct customer. So that's the only difference. I know that they have downtime just as much as we have downtime. The difference is they're inside of a grocery store sitting down waiting for an order to come in. So some of the positives and negatives about being a full service shopper or an in-store shopper. So 
know, for being a full service shop, but we're going to talk about the money. Obviously, there's no cap on how much money that you can make as a full service shopper. However, at the same time, the other side of that is because there's no consistency with the amount of money that you can make for a lot of us. You may have days where you're making a good $100 a day. You may have days where you're making $20 and you don't make anything at all. Um, uh, so that could be that's positive and a negative for being a full service shopper. However, as being an in-store shopper, you are a W-2 employee. You make whatever the minimum wage is in your area. I believe at the store that I visited, minimum wage there, um, those shoppers, one of them says she's making $13.50. $13.50 is the minimum wage at that store. So to me, the consistency of that pay is pretty good. In terms of hours for both, you guys know that with full service shoppers, you can choose to work as many hours as you want to work. However, the, the getting 60 hours a week doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get enough money to match those 60 hours. Versus being an in-store shopper, the maximum amount of hours they can work a week is 29 hours. I don't know what the minimum is, but I know the maximum is 29 hours. So in 29 hours maximum that they can work, I don't know if that's four to six, four hours a day or six hours a day. I have no idea how that breaks down. There's also some other questions in that that I need clarity on um, that I'm going to go back and get. So there's most likely going to be a part two to this video because I need to speak to um, one of the managers of the in-store shoppers to see. Uh, one in-store shopper told me that you just tell them what days you want to work. I know that the only days that are mandatory, at least out here where I am, is Sunday and Monday. So I believe you just have to let them know what other days you're available to work and they pick the hours. However, another person told me that you get to pick the days and you get to pick the hours outside of Sunday and Monday. So those are the things that I need to have verified. Um, I do think that it's a positive that you have guaranteed money coming in. However, it's a negative because you have to follow the same parameters and rules and restrictions as any other W-2 job. You have to provide documentation whenever you call off. There's not a whole lot of flexibility. You're basically tied down to whatever schedule that they give you. And you know that being a full service shopper means that you get to choose whatever hours you want to work. Or if it's just that popping in your area with the on-demand, you can always opt to just do on-demand orders and never ever have to work any hours all. So I know for me personally, um, because my situation is so unique and I need my weekends to be free for my children, it's a lot easier for me to maneuver around my children with, with Uber Eats and Instacart, having that flexibility of not having to be obligated to a certain schedule. However, I am still seriously considering being an in-store shopper. So if there are any of you out there who are in-store shoppers and you can lend any extra information about how that's working out, if you think it's worth it, I mean, it's not a full-time job let me just say that right then and there which is obvious you only get to work a maximum of 29 hours a week and like I said I don't know if there's a minimum that minimum may be five maybe 15 hours so if you're working a minimum of 15 hours if you only got 15 hours you know you only get 15 hours worth of pay whatever minimum wage is times those 15 hours um, if you're doing this for supplementation to your income, you know, I would definitely say hold on to your regular full-time job. If you don't have the, the hustle and the grind um, motivation like some of us have, this is my full-time income. I don't do anything else. I don't have another full-time job. So let me just put that out there for those of you who don't know. I'm not doing anything else right now. I do not have another job that I'm working at. So I am solely dependent on what I'm doing. And I say that because I know there's a lot of people out there who are um, wondering, can I live off of this? It, it depends on your circumstance. You can't completely base it off of what I'm doing at the same time. I know that I am fortunate and blessed enough to live in an area where my rent isn't a lot of money. My rent is completely... Um, dependent upon how much money I make. So um, for me, my expenses are not as high. I'm not paying 1300, 1400 or even higher amounts of rent every month. There are some people that are paying that so they can't afford to live off of three, $400 a week that I'm making with, uh, with Uber Eats. But if you're only doing this as a supplement, then I would say, go ahead. You have nothing to lose. Um, some more positive, some more, um, pros and cons of full service shopper and Instacart in-store shoppers. Um, weather. You know that when we're out here hustling and bustling, we're out here, whether it's raining, we're out here, whether it's hot like it's been now, it's hotter than the squirrels behind out here. You know what I mean? I could barely get a break. I got my AC blowing. It is hot. Um, 
beyond repair. Like I every rest every restaurant I go in, I ask for a water cup. That's how hot it is. Whereas when you are an in-store shopper, you're inside of the restaurant just kind of sitting down waiting for an order to come. Another good thing about that is um, even though you have a maximum of 29 hours that you can work a week, your money isn't dependent on how many batches that you shop. Whereas as an Instacart, as a full service shopper, our money is dependent on how many batches we receive and successfully complete. So just think, you could be scheduled four hours and not receive any orders at all. It happens to a lot of us where we don't receive anything at all. Of course, a lot of us have other things that we're doing too, like Uber Eats, DoorDash, you know, or whatever. But just for the sake of Instacart, you could be out there working four to six hours, be scheduled four to six hours and not make anything. Whereas if you're working in-store shop or if you're working four to six hours, at least you know you're going to get that guaranteed thirteen fifty or $15 or whatever it is that the minimum wage is in your area. So, I mean, I can go on and on about the pros and cons. There's less wear and tear on your car as an in-store shopper because you're not driving from place to place. You're just driving to that one location and working there. You know, with a full service shopper, you still have to put all that wear and tear on your car, the mileage and everything you have to be up on the maintenance of your vehicle and also as wear and tear on your body I do consider this to be um, you know similar to a warehouse job and I'm not talking about those little orders where all you're doing is going in there and picking up produce I'm talking about the larger orders where you're picking up like five cases of water where you're going to Costco and you got to get that big metal cart the flat one um, and put all of those heavy items on there you're picking up 50 pound bags of dog food and things of that nature if you're not using proper lifting techniques you can really mess up your body your back your knees you know you can really mess yourself up so I mean like I said I can go on and on about the pros and cons but the, the most significant difference about being an in-store shopper and a full service shopper is the fact that we deliver as full service shoppers and in-store shoppers don't have to take that necessary step so I'm gonna end this video on that note I'm already I'm pretty sure at like 20 minutes again I apologize for the length if there's any of you guys who have any issues with the length just let me know um, of course my mug main videos are gonna be a lot longer but I try to give you guys as much information and I can as I can in the video so bear with me again you free to skip through or whatever but definitely smash that like button you guys and i will see you guys in the next video until then peace love light